You can support this show at patreon.com slash ASA podcasting. Welcome to a Skyrimatic podcast where I will discuss my adventures and misadventures through Skyrim. Join me. Add your stories, add your tales. Let's uh, let's get into this thing. Ah, welcome back to take two, episode one forty one of Skyrim <laughs> Podcast. Uh, we had a little kerfuffle on uh, the YouTube, but uh, we are back. I'm Michael, and uh, I am joined by Victor. Hello, hello. And uh, we have some folks in the chat. Oh, good. So that's right. going. Yeah, if you reload uh, your, if you're on the same YouTube page, Victor, if you just reload it, the chat will pop up on the right. Yeah, I'm going to go to YouTube. I just had to mute it there. So, uh, um, yeah. All right. Michelle. Hey, Michelle. And Legend Legendary Zelda, Zelda. Is, is that Fiona? Possibly, I don't know. I think, maybe, possibly. I sent her the link. So oh, good. Have it. So, Excellent. Okay. Because you had mentioned that. So. Um, anyway, so we're probably going to talk a lot of modding this episode. Um, I have a quick, couple quick things on Skyrim. Um, I haven't played a lot because I've been playing Assassin's Creed um, Origins, but I, I yeah. did. I hopped back into Skyrim VR today. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, oh god is the exact phrase I was looking for. It's fantastic. Like it, it's beautiful. It's very immersive. I can't play more than like three or four minutes. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I just can't. But if you can, it's certainly well worth it, well worth the experience. But I just can't. Um, like Connor can play it. My son can play it for, I mean, we usually cut him off at about 20 minutes. But I mean, he could probably play for like 10 hours if you want it and no issue. But um, like he'll play for 20 minutes, take a break, and then he can play right again right after that. And it's it's not a problem at all. But uh, I have a little bit of motion sickness issues. Like, I wasn't throwing up or anything. But uh, let's put it this way. I ran out of white run uh, around the back to that bandit camp that's tucked under the uh, under uh, Dragon's Reach. Yep. And, and, like, as I was hopping across the rocks, I was like, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> but it is awesome because you – to aim with your view, you know, looking at the person as you're aiming – and that you know, I was using archery, of course, because it's really the only way to play. And uh, so, as you're, <laughs> as you're, you, you know, you aim with your sight, and it, it's really a, a fantastic way to do it. I, I do like that quite a bit, actually. So, but so you're playing with the PlayStation, right? So yeah, we have so PSVR. Yeah. Are you using motion controllers? I have not tried them yet. I want to. I want to okay. try those. Yeah, I I got to change the settings to try those. I planned on trying them today, but after my three minutes. <laughs> uh, with the controller it was like Ugh. yeah the floating weapon is uh as michelle mentioned is kind of funky a little bit but um it you kind of look past it i guess yeah because yeah. you're generally looking at everything else and it, it it's pretty uh pretty immersive all around so it's it, it it doesn't take your focus too much but i haven't done a lot of melee i assume melee would put me way over the edge and i would be uh, throwing up all over the living room or something so uh <laughs> it, at least archery was you know relatively stable i was sneaking i was you know just sniping and all but um right it's the you know because the movements are are smooth when you're looking around with your head but when you uh use the um uh, one of the toggle sticks to kind of go different directions it like kind of kicks over and then kicks over and then kicks over. So oh, that could be really disconcerting. That's a little, that's a little bit funky on the eyes for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It gives you that little, little jump. Uh, so they must've put in, they must've slowed down the frame rate, put in a delay. I know that Oculus did that early on uh, to try to keep the motion, the motion sickness issues down. Yeah. Uh, so they put in a lag, a, they build a lag into it specifically for, do, do you find like once you've been in there for a while and you take the thing off that it takes you a while to recover from it? Uh, probably not, not necessarily like even nausea, but just, just the, the, that sort of that visual. Um, oh yeah. 
thing being forced into your brain like that? Well, you know, I don't think I can play it long enough for that to actually happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Um, I tried to get Connor to talk about it, but, you know, he's nine, so it's hard to get him to do anything, I say. So yeah, really, I was yeah. like, you've played this for, like, hours. Like, just tell me about it. He's like, I don't know. It's Skyrim, and I run around, and I kill stuff, and it's fun. You know, I'm like, all right, whatever. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to wonder about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I for know. me, I don't think I, I wore it long enough to really uh, – but I know what you mean, where you get that kind of weird effect where you're um, focusing kind of on, something, yeah, yeah. on something visually. Yeah. 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 Um, I would assume it would. It would throw you off a bit, kind of like anything, you know, if you're on a – if you're uh, in a move, you know, playing a, like a racing game and then all of a sudden your eyes kind of bug out because you're like focused on it re- quite a bit or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. kind of probably kind of a similar thing, I would assume. Yeah. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I made it more than uh, was it Kathleen who returned it immediately? Uh, yeah, I think she did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat, <laughs> but I didn't. Re- well, Connor plays it, so I, I didn't, I'm not returning it. But yeah. yeah, I do. I do like the the Switch version still too. I, I still pop that out. It's nice to like hop in and out of. Um, you know that simple. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of that actually. So I've been playing a a pure a pure thief, uh, oh, and nice. I'm actually trying to do all the stones of Baron Zaya uh, mm. with with this one as as a low level thief, which has been fun. Doing so. those in vanilla is very hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I got something to talk about. Well, there's a mod I, I, that just popped. Oh, up really? Today. We can talk about that in a little oh, awesome. while when we get to mods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but. Um, yeah, it's and of course I'm I'm using the wiki to to remember all you the, have to, the odd yeah. places. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I just I did discover that that on the switch anyway you, with the right if you choose the right perks, um, uh, like for instance I sneaked into uh, Dead Crone Rock and grabbed the stone from there without hardly having to to kill anything. I just sneaked uh-huh. right by everybody, including the the Hag Ravens, um, and uh, you can do that in several. Uh, I couldn't quite make it through Anselvan because you have to do that last. You sort of get locked into that last room. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And uh, but um, but a lot of the places because I I mean to me that that whole quest is kind of useless if you're a high level character because you don't really need the perk once it's once you get past a certain level. I want I want all those gems you know early, early on. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I feel like by the time you get it, you don't need it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It takes so long. So, oh, God. So, yeah. yeah, even if you're focused on it, it takes quite a while. Yeah, well, and then, of course, so I'm focused not only on, on doing it, but on making a lot of money so I can buy Proud Spire Manor. And that's that's the, you know, uh, because that's one of the – that's the biggest stumbling block, I guess. There's, you know, you got to join the Mage's College. Yeah. And what's the other – the third – well, there's three quest blocked ones. I forget what the third one yeah, is. Yeah, that's right. There is three. Yeah. Um, um, Gosh, it's been a while and, since I did the whole run through. Um, yeah, yeah. I did it once Whatever. vanilla, and then I did it once uh, with the you know the mod that puts the markers out there. Right. Um, right. I'm trying to think. I think it's in Markarth. Maybe I don't remember. It might anyway. be. Um, is it in like but, the uh, what is that the uh, museum or something in Markarth? No, that one I sneaked into. No, no, because you can get in there at any and, point. Yeah. Because you can pickpocket the key, so yeah. I I pickpocketed the key and got in, got that one. And uh, there's another one. Actually, do I have that set up here? Let me just. Uh, I'm gonna go look at this. View the mod on. Uh, um, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna quickly install the mod in mod organizer here, and then I can view it on the Nexus. Mm-hmm. Um, and because uh, it mentions. It mentions the uh, the three. So so well. If we want to get to that quickly or yeah. early on, there's oh, this no, mod. Go right to it. Yeah, just it just popped up. Um, is today the tenth? No, today's the eleventh. Yeah, right? the eleventh. So it, no, it popped the, up yesterday. Okay. yesterday. It's called Cutting Stone Corners, and so the idea is that um, it, it doesn't give you map markers, but uh. once you've found i think i'm not going to read the whole uh, description here but once you found the first stone you can go to vex and oh, if you okay. have enough speech skill and the right uh things you can actually pay her for one location 
of another stone and then every week she'll have a new location for you oh that's an interesting way to do it it's kind of a cool idea and um oh yes yeah, the dark brotherhood you got it there's there's uh, oh that's right it's um, in the uh yeah, yeah. there's one there's one in there yeah um but what this mod has done is uh and i actually i asked the author a couple questions i don't know if they've uh answered my question yet or not um actually uh Okay, so what I asked uh, the the, the model whose name is Iron Dusk Thirty Three, and I, I recognize the name. I think he or she has done several other mods. Um, so I asked him, uh, them, whatever. Um, uh, does the mod take into account stones you've already found? I don't even know if that's possible. I don't oh, want to yeah. pay a thousand gold for a location I already know. Um, and then I just you know sort of commented that I thought a week between. Uh, locations from Vex was a little bit long because of what we just discussed about the, the mod kind of yeah. the the, uh, the quest being useless later on. Uh, he did say it shouldn't send you to stones you've already retrieved um, unless you already have one of the four stones that were moved, and that's what I was about to say. So so he moved all those quest lock stones oh, out nice. into non quest lock locations. Not he didn't list them, but, but he moved, moved them. them. Yeah. Yeah, which is really cool. I think that's a great idea. That's so, a fantastic so, idea. Yeah. yeah. So that sounds like it's a, as far as I know right now, it's a legacy Skyrim only mod. Um, but uh, I haven't tried it, obviously. It just popped up. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to try it on a build at some point. It's, it seemed like a great, every great idea. Um, is that Andrew who just popped in? Oh, um, someone there? Oh, I can. Uh, let's see. Is it? uh, it's in the chat there. Um, so that or it's your it's your alter ego and you're typing and you don't know it. Right. Oh, in the uh, in the live chat, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, wow. You're on way longer delay. I typed that a while ago. <laughs> no, no. I was looking at it. Oh, okay. Window, so I, just, I, I was just like, wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, but that's a great idea to uh, move the quest lock ones like that because yeah. yep. yeah. it makes it so. much more immersive as well because you can just focus on thieves and not even get into anything else. Uh, because of moving it out of those areas, um, and, and and obviously the one at uh, the Thalmor Embassy had been moved uh, previously anyway. Right, it's so, already been moved. Yeah, hey, Fiona, get it. We, we thought that was you. yes. I figured that uh, was you. Awesome, glad you got the link. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so that that's that's a great way to do it because I mean they already did it in the game anyway, and it allows you just to play it in a more specific way and not have mm -hmm. to you know you don't have to yeah. join the Dark Brotherhood or or do whatever. Isn't one of them? Uh, in like part of the main quest or something you have to get it i don't know it's i don't remember i can look them up on the i forget, the I forget where all the locked but... ones are but yeah so that way you don't yeah. have to get in the other quests anymore it, you know you can really fine tune the character you're playing and not have to uh you know hop in and out of different things and just join whatever the dark brotherhood just to get that point even even if your character wouldn't be doing that you know yeah, I'm I'm kind of hoping that they um actually put it up on uh on for Xbox 1. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, cuz actually I'm I'm you know, I'm leaving for a two-week trip down to North Carolina yeah. on this weekend and I'm taking my Xbox with me. So, oh, there you uh, go. I've got it all loaded up. I um Cinetar uh gaming. I know Michelle likes Cinetar. He's um and I don't know if you've watched any of his YouTube mm. videos, but they're they're pretty good. He's a really really cool Eastern European dude. He's he's uh uh, he's got a really strong accent, but he's really eloquent, and he he writes really well. He does he does some nice role plays and oh, stuff, nice. and he does build videos and stuff like that. and And he did a recently did a, a pure thief build, which using Ordinator and a few other things, um, which looked like a heck of a lot of fun. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try it um, on my Xbox uh, while I'm away and see. Oh, nice. Uh, but, Anybody who wants to check it out, it's, I think it's his most recent video, but it's just uh, Cinitar Gaming, I think, S-I-N-I-T-A-R uh, Gaming. Um, we can, uh, if I think of it, I'll put links, I'll either send you the links or, or I can put the links in the, on the YouTube. Uh, video oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. For all these mods <laughs> and stuff like that, so... Uh, um, uh, but uh, but yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. So he he really uses um, c the complete uh, uh, you know branches of some of the ordinator you know thief perk trees like speech and, oh, and sneak wow. and stuff like that all the way up to the top. So in pickpocket, 
um, and really, really sort of goes deep into using those to, to make like just tons of freaking money. Just, you know, like, uh, cause there's several perks there. I didn't even realize you, that, you know, you can, uh, there's one, I think in the pit pickpocket that, randomly adds 10,000 gold to your, I, I forget how wow. it works. I mean, there's all kinds of really cool money-making perks in there that I just didn't, never even explored. Yeah. I haven't um, used a lot of those higher level in the, in that tree. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, so, uh, so I'm looking forward to trying that out. Of course, I'll be working too, so I won't have a whole lot of time. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, you only have so much time. <laughs> it's a it's a busman's holiday, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I was uh, actually cons- I I need to rebuild uh, my Xbox One game over again. Um, mm-hmm. Just delete everything off and start over because I really haven't played since I was in Beyond Bruma. Um, I pretty much hopped into Oblivion for several months and then. Uh, you know, I played on the Switch and stuff like that, but uh, then I hopped into uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. We can talk about that later. But, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, so I've had a pretty long sabbatical from my Xbox One version of the game. Um, so I, I really need to go through it, get all, delete all the mods that I've downloaded, and just uh, you know start fresh with a, a full new character. Yeah, so would I. I mean, I I had I, I basically did the same thing. I, I deleted all my old saves, um, and updated all the mods and added a few more. And and uh, it was it was nice to see that some of the mods that I'm enjoying in Legacy, like the Skyland uh, texture overhaul, is available on Xbox One now in several versions. You know, large or small, um, and uh, a few of the other ones. And and a lot of Eni Shion's mods have mm-hmm. been updated. Um, so you know. Um, by the way, uh, anybody who's not a, a Patreon supporter of his may not know this, but he's working on an overhaul of his Standing Stones mod, oh. uh, which is currently called Aurora. Um, and the new one's going to be called Andromeda, I think. And he's been dropping uh, notes to Patreon supporters about all that. I won't go into it because they're you know Patreon stuff, and I don't know if he wants that uh, out to the general public or not. But um there's a lot of really cool uh he's he's re-overhauled the stones again and made a lot of them even more interesting so it, it should be pretty cool oh, when he cool. finally comes out with it i don't think yeah. i've ever used that one uh it it changes the um perks of the of each of the stones essentially yeah yeah and honestly i i don't i don't really like aurora although the mm-hmm. the, the Cinetar gaming build that i just mentioned uh, earlier actually uses it because the steed stone um in under Aurora, what does it do? It gives you, an, I believe, one of the perks of the Steed Stone in Aurora gives you a a, uh, a summonable chest that has unlimited capacity. So essentially, it's like having Atlas the Pack Pony. I don't, people who've been watching my live stream know who Atlas is, but <laughs> but uh, um, it's like having a, you know an unlimited. A, you know backpack that you can summon and, and stick stick things in so that's it's that plus i think there's a movement speed buff for the steed stone oh, okay um and uh um but i don't know what he's done with the steed stone on uh in the in the new version so i i mean if if it's anything like his you know wildcat and smilodon he'll probably have both of them available so so um um but uh, that's, the, I mean, that's another thing I've been playing a lot with, um, with mods. Um, Adam and Michelle have been watching some of my, um, my live streams. I've been uh, playing with different um, combat mods, and I've settled on a really nice combination of three that I really, really like. Um, a lot, frankly, a lot better than Wildcat or Smilodon. Ultimate Combat is, is just really awesome i think it's still only uh available for legacy let me take okay. a quick look it may not be it may or may not let me see if he's got a sc version um that it uh he doesn't mention an sc version on the legacy page so i don't know but it, it adds a whole lot of cool um things the stagger is not nearly as overdone as it is in in the in smile and dawn and and uh um and wildcat um and there's another new ish 
mod that came out late last year called Know Your Enemy um, uh, slash trait based resistances. Um, and so between Ultimate Combat and Know Your Enemy and a new spawning mod called Genesis, hmm. uh, playing at adept level is pretty freaking tough pretty tough yeah yeah yeah. even at adept (laughs) yeah yeah. um i mean i got like for instance uh where was i i think i did uh anzalvund which is the lua alskaven you know uh, oh yeah yeah uh last night and um with with my uh i didn't live stream it but with this character that i have been live streaming and um um I got in there and I think it was, it was Ansel. And anyway, wherever it was, I got in there and I, and everything was fine until I, you know, defeated the boss. And then all of a sudden Genesis spawned like 12 more Draugr death Lords. Oh boy. <laughs> <What the> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I used, I used up all of, sorry, my voice is still kind of <clears throat> weak, but I used up all my potions. Uh, I, eventually, I made it out of there, but it was it was quite uh, it was quite harrowing. I'll, I'll tell you what. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, but uh, know your enemy does uh, some cool things, like for instance, uh, similar to what um, uh, uh, Requiem did. For instance, it it removes uh, it makes skeletons almost immune to arrows. Wow. Um, well, that because, makes sense well, too. Yeah. It, yeah. It makes sense, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's a certain extent. Not totally immune, but but they're far more resistant. Very light damage, before. yeah. Uh, but they are e- they're less resistant than normal to blunt Melee, weapons yeah. like hammers. Oh, okay, stuff, that so. makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty well balanced. Uh, it's a, a really nice, nice uh, low script-free, uh, low overhead mod. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, it's called Know Your Enemy, Trait-Based Resistances and Weaknesses. It's a lot of fun. There's so many great mods that have come out in the last month and a half uh, in Legacy. Um, uh, the other one that came out, um, yeah, t- TARDIS the Pony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the TARDIS <laughs> <I love> Pony. <laughs> Alice is great. I, I, I found him, uh, uh, I think it was... Was it through the uh, the you know the Dragonborn Museum, the Legacy of the Dragonborn oh, mod, man. or one of the people I was watching who was doing a run through of it um, uh, mentioned it or something like that? And but Atlas is awesome. He's this tiny little pony with with two boxes and a bag on his back, and he'll take anything you give him. I mean, just he'll load take, it you up know, thousands <laughs> of pounds. It's, yes, it's unrealistic, but when you're when you're playing with that mod in particular you just got to suspend your disbelief because Mm -hmm. you have to grab everything. It's just, it's that, it's that kind of mod, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work if you try to be sort of quote realistic unquote uh, with your, with your carry weight. With your carry weight. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, but, but yeah, Atlas, Atlas is a lot of fun and you can, he's, he, he acts like a, a regular follower. So you can, and if you use, um, um jackson's map markers you can mark him because he doesn't he doesn't come under the purview of follower mods so he just acts like a villain level follower so you can't actually you know um, teleport him to you ah okay but if you use jackson's map markers you can teleport yourself to him so if you lose him you can always find you can always find them okay yeah so so it's pretty cool uh, yeah, exactly. Lots of relics, lots of relics, and also you have to just grab all the all the stuff because you need materials to create replicas. If you want to use one of the relics that goes in the museum, like you know one of the Daedric artifacts or whatever, mm-hmm. if you want to use it in your gameplay, you need to make a, re- a replica of it to stick in the museum. So, wow, okay. and those replicas often take. Uh, a lot of interesting and odd materials. So you have to have all kinds of stuff on hand. Um, and there's no doubt that once you start loading up the museum, you know, your game saves start to bloat and, and the, it, slow, it slows the game down. A little oh, bit yeah, I imagine it must uh, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, let's see, what was the other mod that popped up today? Um, that I was going to mention, uh, let's see, I've got all these tabs open. I'm going to close some of them here. Um, Genesis, uh, yeah, Dawn Horses, nah. Um, oh, Simply Tame. Yeah, that, that that's a really simple little little mod. There's a couple of mods out there that let you tame animals. 
Um, but this one is is a very simple little uh, uh, uses only vanilla scripts, so it doesn't even require uh, SKSE. Um, but if you have the right speech skills and the right, um, you know, uh, food, whether it's, uh, you know, vegetables or meat or whatever, uh, and you're at the right level, you can tame various different animals and have them fight for you. And then once, once you've tamed them, it get, grants you some, you know, the ability to either dismiss them or, or make them wait for you or whatever. So theoretically with, you know, some raw meat and the right speech level, you could tame a saber cat and and have the saber cat fight fight with you it sounded like a pretty cool mod so i'm gonna try it's just called simply tame simply tame uh, that sounds pretty yeah. interesting yeah 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 that just popped up today or yesterday so um so that was pretty cool yeah it's uh, been a while since i've gone through any any of the uh mod lists or uh what's been coming up just because of what i've been you know my uh unintended skyrim sabbatical <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, so I, I can't even it, there's probably so much more i mean it's, it hasn't been that long it's been like a month but in a month so many things pop up that it's like uh you feel like you, you have to start all over again in that in that period of time oh yeah i mean it's amazing it's still so it's such a vibrant community and 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 it's still as i was sort of discussing with fiona on the on the group uh on the Facebook group that, uh, you know, legacy is still really the more vibrant of the two, two communities. I mean, hmm. there's just stuff seems to pop up there first and then might make its way. There's a couple of backwards ports that I've, I've found. One was, a, a a kind of a cool environmental mod called obsidian mountain fog. I think it's called, and it just adds some really nice clouds and layers around the distant mountains. It's pretty. And that was a, that was a backwards port from SE because oh, obsidian okay. weathers was, a was an SC only. SC only. Um, yeah. Is it easier um, to uh, port it backwards than it is to go? No, I think it's the... actually harder. It's actually harder. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but the Obsidian uh, Mountain Fogs worked well because I found it first for SE and really, really liked the way it looked and was wishing that I could use it in Legacy and it just popped up a few days ago. So okay. I, I loaded it up immediately because it's very, it's, it's, it's just textures, I think. Mm -hmm um and uh, a very small esp um and uh so i loaded it up in my current playthrough and it looks pretty good it uh it just adds some really nice um you know uh depth to the distant mountains and it covers some of the crappier lod's <laughs> 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 so which is also cool <clears throat> sorry my voice is uh going um, uh, yeah go ahead uh, yeah. if you want to ask ask whatever question you want go um, for it yeah. I um, personally won't be able to answer it, but Victor. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a question on how to not to throw up while playing uh, Skyrim VR, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you can ask me. Dramamine uh, and bourbon. Those, yeah. Those, 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 yeah. 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 I was considering that. Uh, I think that may help with the balance issues. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, really, really. I've never had I've never had a motion sickness issue in my life, uh, including being on some of those, you know. Um, oh, simulators or things NASA, like that? NASA simulator things, yeah. but I, I have... I, I've only tried VR very briefly. I tried an Oculus once. It didn't really mm -hmm. bother me, but uh, I'm still holding off. I just don't know if, if I want to um, invest in, the, in yeah. the PlayStation VR or not. You know what I haven't tried yet, though, and, and this does seem to work for me, is um, the fan blowing in the face. Really? Um, because uh, it's weird. Uh, you know, we, we go to Disney pretty regularly or whatever. But um, so there's, you know, motion simulator rides and things like that. And, uh, there's the one that's uh, avatar based, but wind and like mist hits you in the face and it doesn't bother me at all, uh, which is weird okay. because every other one bothers me to know. It. <laughs> like I can't huh. even sit on the train and read my phone, let alone, you know, uh, go in a VR. So I wonder if I wear the VR and have the wind blowing in my face, uh, if that will mitigate some of the issues but we'll, we'll see well it might because if if you're if you, i mean it's your, your brain is is sort of sensing uh yeah like movement almost i guess and, well it's also it's also sort of focusing your brain in in a single direction right because you feel the direction that the the mist yeah. is coming from yeah so it's sort of narrowing your focus that makes that makes a lot of sense so i may try that i don't know if i'll be allowed to use the mist in the living room but i'll at least get the fan going <laughs> Well, you know, you know, Connor won't be using it while you're using it, so just have him get a spray bottle. Yeah, have him get him for a spray bottle and, and mist me in the face. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that'll I, work, right? I should go yeah. swimmingly. <laughs> All right. So Fiona had a question about the uh, yeah, uh, the difference. Reading. The difference between was it mod organizer and the Nexus mod? Yeah. It, yeah. Well, or not. Sorry. Here's, here's my take on that. All right. So so I'll go a little bit. I'll go sort of semi deep with with the difference between mod organizer and 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 Nexus mod manager, and this will help explain why profiles are easier in in mod organizer. Um, the big difference between the two mod managers and don't get me wrong this is an apple and and uh, ibm issue it's a canon versus nikon issue as michelle will know it's 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 one of those you know they're both good tools but um mod organizer its paradigm is that it keeps your data folder in skyrim sacrosanct so it puts nothing in the data folder um which means that you always have a vanilla data folder um, and mod organizer uses virtual directories. So every single profile that you build in mod organizer has its own set of virtual directories, its own set of INI files and its own set of everything else. So when you switch between profiles in mod organizer, it's virtually instantaneous. Um, When you switch between profiles in Nexus Mod Manager, uh, Nexus Mod Manager loads the mods into your data folder, and then it will unload and reload mods that you're changing out, uh, and it can take a while. Furthermore, it doesn't necessarily use uh, it. It will use the same INI files, or it will. It may or may not. I, I haven't really, uh, but. Uh, it does take longer and it does not keep your, your, uh, your data folder uh, pure. Um, so with mod organizer, for instance, uh, you can run as you can with Nexus mod manager, you can run things like loot and uh, TS five edit and Rye bash and all that stuff from inside uh, the, the app. But when you do it in mod organizer, the resulting orders like loot orders, your profiles, load order it doesn't reorder the data folder so every single profile has its own loot profile if you follow what i'm saying so uh it's a much more versatile tool um for somebody who uses a lot of mods and likes to play around with a lot of profiles which is like me (laughs) um and for uh you know if you're just simply playing with one or two characters and 20 or 30 mods, then Nexus mod manager is perfectly fine. Um, to go a little farther, <laughs> if everybody's still with <laughs> yeah, me. Um, another thing that mod organizer does that Nexus mod manager doesn't do is um, mod organizer arranges mods into two separate sections so you have a list on the right that is all of your plugins. If you look at on my live stream on the the Open World site, there's a there's a uh, a link to my Mod Watch profile for that character, and and you'll see that under Mod Watch it says plugins, and then it says Mod List, and then it lists the INI files. Those are from that particular profile. So when you load mods in Mod Organizer and you run loot, loot will put your ESPs in the correct order, but it doesn't affect overwrites. Anybody who's used Nexus Mod Manager knows that when you load a new mod, you'll also you'll often get this question with several options that says, you know, do you want to overwrite this? And then it gives you the option of yes, no, yes to mod, yes to all. And it's very hard for you to really know what, what that means unless you're really following. And it also means that when you load mods into a profile in Nexus Mod Manager, you need to be sure that you load them in the correct order. Whereas in Mod Organizer, you can load all your mods and in the left side of the window, you can then reorder them manually because it gives you a visual indication of what's overwriting what. There's a little icon with a lightning bolt and a plus and a minus sign and it when you click on it it will tell you exactly what mod is being overwritten by the mod that you clicked on and what mods are 
overriding it. I know that sounds complicated, but anyway, it's it's a much more granular way of of dealing with uh, texture files, overwriting textures, and everybody has gotten anybody who's done any modding has gotten that sort of dreaded, you know, uh, blank blue texture on something, oh, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And that's usually caused by a mod overriding a vanilla texture okay. and not providing a you know a uh, an option. Those kind of things you can resolve much more easily with Mod Organizer. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I know. Now I'm getting. I'm sort of running off. But uh, uh, <laughs> well, well, as Adam says, yeah, yes to mod, yes to all. Well, <clears throat> what what that means is when when Nexus Mod Manager asks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. Uh, when Nexus Mod Manager says yes to mod or yes to all, it's asking you whether you want uh, um, the mod that you're loading to only overwrite the mod that it's referring to, that the question is referring to, or all the mods that you've loaded previously. That's what that what that's what that means. Uh, but yes, there's lots of great videos out there um, on using Mod Organizer, uh, specifically um, Gophers videos. Oh yeah, um, Gamer Poets has done some great ones, um, and it's it's worth the learning curve. And once you've learned how to use it, especially in Legacy, mm -hmm. SE a little more questionable than the newer version of Mod Organizer, which is two point one point one maybe. Um, is pretty stable, but the old legacy version, which is uh, 1.3.11, uh, which I use constantly, is rock solid. It's there's, you know, it's absolutely perfectly stable. Works perfectly with legacy, and if you're running Windows 10 with the latest build, um, it's a little bit better than it used to be. Um, and so, so yeah, there's a lot of good reasons if you want to load a lot of mods. There's a lot of good reasons to to go with mod organizer. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what sometimes NMM does weird things, uh, and a lot of it I, I found my own for myself with a Nexus mod manager. I was so used to use because when I went to Skyrim SE, I was mm -hmm. using Nexus mod manager again. I was so used to using mod organizer and how fast it it changes between profiles that I yeah. was, it was really my fault. I was getting impatient with Nexus mod manager because it takes a while for it to pull stuff out of your data folder and put things in properly. And if you get impatient and start clicking, you know, God, God damn it. <laughs> um, then it locks up. Then it locks you know, up. And, uh. Right. And then you're screwed. So, so, and then, yeah, totally. Because it, I, I, I killed it once I, I, I said, screw this. And I got task manager and killed the process. Well, I was, that yeah, was totally, yeah. Bad, Not a good idea. idea. <laughs> yeah. I, end, I ended up reloading Skyrim SE completely. Yeah. Oh, so, so, yeah. So yeah, don't don't get impatient with Nexus Mod Manager. I um, think I still have that version of uh, Mod Organizer on my desktop. Um, cause I, I, yeah, and it's still yeah, available on yeah. on on Nexus um, on the the legacy mm -hmm. Nexus site. Yeah. It, the Mod Manager, the Mod Organizer there is available. Is the version one point three point one one? I will say to anybody who uses Mod Organizer. When you use it, install it inside the game folder that you're using it for. You can install it multiple times. So if you're going to use it with Legacy Skyrim, put a version in there. If you're going to use it with Fallout, put a version yeah. in there. And and then run it from directly inside that folder. Um, hopefully you're putting your games in an alternate drive and not in the x86 folder, your program files. But that's, that's a totally different issue. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, install mod organizer in in the game folder that you want to run it from, um, and then it'll it'll run a separate instance of itself for each game. Um, I mean, Nexus Mod Manager does a does a great job of doing that. Actually, I think I love that part of NMM where you know you can set it to ask you which game you want it to run. Um, so in fact, NMM uh, kind of does that more elegantly than Mod Organizer does, um, but. Uh, um, uh, and everybody's waiting for the new version of Nexus Mod Manager to come out because it's going to be built by the same guy who designed Mod Organizer. So we'll see, we'll see uh, if if it's if it's as good as everybody hopes it will be. Hopes it will be, yeah, yeah. So yeah, with um, all that good stuff on Legacy, I feel like I need to rebuild 
my legacy now. But there's always so much time. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you have no life like me, then there's lots of time, Michael. I mean, you've got a family. You go yeah, on like you know. 20-mile hikes, though. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, <that's> <laughs> Although it was like two degrees for the past week, so... <laughs> Yeah, and I was sick. So I, oh, I, there you go. It was a good week to be sick because it was miserable around these absolutely. parts. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> it was absolutely yeah. miserable around these parts. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Michelle says it is, it, you really do have to work slowly and patiently with, with Nexus Mod mm -hmm. Manager. And, and, uh, and it does do profiles, but, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the whole – the big thing with, with Mod Organizer is the fact that it keeps your data folder clean. Okay. Uh, that's, that is what makes it uh, as good as it is. It's 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 the foundation of why of why it's the better uh, the better program to use. Uh, all everything else flows that flows out of that one paradigm. Um, so, um, and uh, I mean, at some point, um, and maybe I'll do this on a live stream. Uh, you know. If you're uh, Fiona in particular and any, anybody else, I know Michelle's done a lot of modding and stuff. Uh, it's, the, you know, the first step is the is the mod manager, but then there's you know learning to use loot, make sure your load order is in the right order, and then learning how to build your own patches. And that that takes a while. I've been I've been working with a new uh, patch building mm -hmm. program recently that that works really well, but that's that's beyond the scope of this this podcast. So. <laughs> uh, so. Um, but yeah, building patches for large, large mod load orders is, is wow. extremely important. So, um, yeah, I know it's, 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 it becomes a hobby, right? You know, it's, 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 it's playing with the game yeah. as much as it's playing the but game. But it's another so. way of experiencing the game, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's totally. yeah. Yeah. I've been, I mean, there's a, I just built a new one around this mod called spell research. I don't know if anybody's seen that it's, it's freaking awesome, but it, it, it's, uh, um, I've been, uh, it's a totally different magic, um, uh, sort of way of doing magic. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's an amazing mod, uh, but it's really complex and, and it takes a long time. Um, uh, yeah, right bash, see bash, yeah. my bash. I mean, actually, okay. So I'll, I'll add one to your list, Michelle. It's Mator Smash. And that's, that's what I've been using lately. Uh, so uh, and it's really it's the it's the it's the best uh, so far. It's the it's the latest and the latest and greatest. Um, but uh, yeah, spell research uh, highly recommended. Check it out. I don't think it's available um, for Xbox, unfortunately. Ah. And I'm not sure if it's available. It might be available in SE. I'm looking at the. But definitely um, on Legacy. Definitely on legacy, and that's you know, yeah. There you go. You know, legacy again still is is the the king of the hill uh, when it comes to 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 mods um, and spell research. One of the things that that it does, aside from, it gives you the ability to uh, very very immersively actually really go and go out and learn spells from the ground up. Oh, using cool. materials and alchemy and and stuff and it's also um compatible with a lot of the um uh mods like apocalypse and oh, lost wow. grimoire right so you can import those mod those spells into spell research at the beginning of the game yeah it's really cool that it, seems brilliant me. so basically you like yeah. build up your or your spell uh casting abilities by learning little by little so you would learn i assume like uh some kind of fire spells and use some kind of fire salts or other things to learn how to do that or something. Well, what you do, yeah, it's even more complex than that, believe it or not. Wow. You, you, there's several, there's several paths and the bot author has built all these. Days. So essentially you start by, and it, this works well because I've been, I've been working on characters lately that, that will only uh, use consume, etc. what they can make themselves, right? You can pick up and sell items, mm -hmm. but I can't, the characters can't use weapons unless they've made them themselves. They can't use armor oh. unless they've made them themselves, can't use, can't eat food unless they've gathered it or grown it themselves, huh. etc. So, so this, it's a fun way to play, but, but, um, so, and, you know, mods like Hunter Born and stuff yeah. like that make it really, really cool. Um, but, uh, this spell research, so you start by creating a, uh, um, a, a, a research book 
and then you start doing research by breaking down items that this mod author has sort of stuck out there in the world, ancient artifacts and grimoires and, and uh, ancient texts and little pieces of enchanted items that you can then put in this cauldron and melt them down and, <laughs> and learn, learn effects. And then you write a thesis and you have to study the thesis and it takes energy and then you got to sleep. I mean, it's just, it, it's just, it's, it's so cool. It, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's also total a total geek out um so uh so i've been having fun learning how to it's but it, it's it takes a while uh it, it takes a long in-game time to learn to learn but he's yeah and it's cool though because he's he's integrated the whole system you know he's integrated now so that so that alchemy is part of it he's added new alchemy ingredients and you can use those to create um things to enhance your spells and stuff like that so yeah it's really it's really cool i haven't even begun to to really you know uh, uh let's see what i'm, I'm looking back at the at oh the, the chat yeah here. Stephen was saying he uh he, he starts his characters now but nothing but robes and goes from there and doesn't keep anything he doesn't self-create yeah, isn't that an awesome way to play? I I, yeah. I love doing that. It's 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 great with like alt start or something. You can start using the uh, the you know robbed and left for dead options, which which basically is that it just starts you with with nothing and and then just sneak around and you know punch a few wolves to death and rip their <laughs> rip rip their flesh off and make yourself a leather <laughs> some leather armor. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And of course, Steven is a uh, Skyrim book club who just finished the uh, finale on Let's Play Skyrim. Of that was his, a great, uh, great series. Fantastic of his uh, Dawnguard play there. So uh, check that out over at Let's Play Skyrim, which will be becoming uh, just Let's Play dot 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 because uh, we'll be kind of alternating between uh, Fallout and Skyrim. Just a heads up. But uh, yeah, and uh, Michelle is saying he was, um, he's been modding SE, but kind of. Thinks I guess it looks like he's going to go back to legacy. Cause it... Yeah, I do think that, and that's uh, the guy I mentioned earlier, Sinatar, um, is, uh, did a video on. I posted it on the on the group of several weeks ago on why legacy is still better graphically, mm -hmm. um, but in many other ways uh, as well. Uh, for um, uh, um, and I think I mentioned this to Fiona on in a discussion on the group. It, it just ENB for. for 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 instance, uh, isn't handled as well uh, under SE as it is under DX9. So you don't get the effects that some of the effects you do, uh, uh, parallax effects and and ambient occlusion effects and things like that. I don't know why, and I it has it's it's something that the author of ENB has not been able to overcome or doesn't even particularly want to. Um, but it has to do with DX11, I think. No, oh, okay. So, that yeah, makes sense. It's unfortunate, but uh, um, anyway. Oh, sorry. and yeah, and Stephen was saying that that gives it uh, his early uh, starting playing from nothing, kind of like a Minecraft feel. Which yeah. which makes sense because you yeah in that game you're you're building from nothing, yep. Um, yep. and and just starting at scratch, which is kind of what I like about Minecraft as well. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think Michelle's been playing a lot of the forest, right? Which which oh, yeah, uh, right, has, yeah. has some of that as as well. I, I tried it a few mm -hmm. times, and and uh, I haven't got into it quite as much. But but I, I like games like that, sort of, you know, sort of survival, and that's and that's what you know that style of playing in Skyrim mm -hmm. is all about. Uh, and there's so many great mods to to make it possible, not just Hunterborn, but you know, uh, Campfire and Frostfall and I Need and all all those other sort of classic mods that everybody mm -hmm. uses. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. Some one of my neighbors is making a lot of noise. <laughs> no, I, I can't. I, I okay. mean, I heard a little light noise, but nothing, nothing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I played. Uh, I I was playing a little bit of the uh, Long Dark. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And yeah, another, another survival I, I bought one, the, yeah. that early on. And I know I know Collins played a lot of it mm -hmm. too. Um, and uh, uh, that's a great. And it just, I think, have you played the story mode? Because I haven't tried that yet. I haven't tried the story mode yet. Uh, I tried the. Uh, I want to go back to it because I started on the story mode, but I didn't really know the mechanics, so it didn't didn't go real well. So I hopped into the uh, normal, um, just survival, and mm -hmm. have kind of learned a little bit now. So I think I'm going to hop back to the uh, the story mode to kind of get a feel for that. 
Yeah. Yeah. I liked the art style from the beginning. It was, it was, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, yeah. it, it's something I could see, like, I, I probably wouldn't take a character at a long stretch, you know, those super long survival runs, but it's something I could see starting in fits and starts here and there, you know, a little yeah. bit here, a little bit there. It, it yeah. It's enjoyable to just kind of get lost in it. And you're just in that, uh, <laughs> that great white north uh <laughs> yeah really well it's the kind of game i'd love to see on the switch you know because it would uh, be great for that actually yeah yeah something um, you could just pick up and play and like kind of like a uh, meditative thing right yeah or lunchtime or whatever you know that's that's the that's the exactly the kind of stuff that that that, that a portable gaming system is great for uh michelle is saying there's only two of the five chapters done Oh, for for, uh, I, for the story I mode. assume that's for the uh, story mode of Long Dark. Yeah, because I, uh, I guess you start like as a plane crash or something like that. Um, that was the original. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was you were a plane crash survivor. Yeah, and I, I thought when I first played it, I, I I saw it when it first came out. I bought it uh, in you know you know ultra early access on Steam, and I think they they overdid a few things and underdid a few things, mm-hmm. and and I kind of stopped playing it. But um, it you know it was it was it was fun. Um, but uh but they've really i mean they have kept up support of that game now for what two or three years yeah it's been out for quite a while yeah yeah and everybody says it's 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 really good so i actually bought it on steam quite a long time ago Uh, i don't think i played a lot of it on there um and then i picked it up for oh the xbox one because uh, i just saw it was on sale or something one day and i was like oh i'll pick it up for this because it it just happened just easier because it's just on there if I happen to have I, it on. I didn't even realize it was on there. Huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think it's relatively recent, maybe. Maybe that's why. I don't yeah. know, but I I picked it up. It was either on sale or it was relatively recently released, one or the other. So uh, yeah. I picked it up well, for that. Well, that, that actually bodes well for maybe it coming to the Switch. I mean, if yeah, it's yeah. port, ported to console. Yeah. I can't see why it wouldn't uh, be viable on there. It's not, you know, yeah. that taxing. Where you know, And they just announced what, a bunch of other remasters for the switch today i think or yesterday oh did they oh like cool well, let's like go look dark souls maybe and some other stuff i forget holy crap yeah. dark souls really oh my god i think so if i'm if i'm not mistaken yeah I, I, i'm not sure i can even imagine playing that on the on uh with those the uh, little uh what do they call those things on the side side of it the the uh joy cons is it oh yeah yeah, yeah the joy cons yeah, yeah yeah they're just uh, the, the buttons i can barely <laughs> play dark souls on a keyboard and mouth <laughs> much less. Uh, so that's that is so far beyond me yeah i get michelle was saying about the uh, the screen on the switch it, it, it i i can see size wise it's it's big for a handheld as we've traditionally known them but it's still a relatively small screen um yeah, like an iPad Mini or or something of that size. Yeah, I could see that as a as a a bigger size, uh, more more viable for our uh, older eyes. Because I, I don't know the the iPad Mini isn't that much bigger. It's not than that much Switch. bigger though, is it? Yeah. No, it's a little taller. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not much wider. Um, so a slightly different aspect ratio. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean. It's a, well, I don't want to be an Apple fanboy or anything, but I think the iPads probably have a better, oh, much a better, better resolution. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. that, um, what the uh, handheld's only doing 720, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it is, uh-huh. if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. yeah, when you get in those tight little dark areas, it can be a bit much to see. Um, it is, you're right. It is dark, yep. I know yeah. I find it when I, um, when I'm doing archery and stuff, anything long distance, uh, <laughs> it can be a it can be a struggle for sure. <laughs> like a uh, Voltheim yeah. Tower, there's that guy up top. I usually shoot him from like over by the giants there up on the hill. Yep. Uh yep. it's really hard to see him from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's you're right. I don't know. I haven't uh and of course I haven't taken the the what do they call it? The the uh the perk that lets you telescope. Oh yeah, in. yeah, to zoom in. Yeah, I don't think I have that perk yet either. Yeah, that would help a little bit. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he's like an ant up there. <laughs> so yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I think I've hit him on some of my tries, but oh, it's it's quite a it's quite a task for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but still regardless i mean i've i've still really enjoyed all all the time i've spent with the switch so uh um you know yeah um, i have too yeah it and it's it's so great for traveling and stuff and just uh you know even local traveling or just you know you're laying around upstairs and you don't feel like going down to actually sit down and play something or whatever or going into the main room to play it, it it's, it's yeah nice totally i mean yeah. when when it was when i was sick and it was you know like you know four degrees outside last week <laughs> I, I i got home from work and you know go in my bedroom close the door turn the heat up a little bit and just get under the covers and play, <laughs> play on the <laughs> switch it. it's a hell of everything else you know no couch uh, necessary yeah <laughs> no couch yeah no no one to sit at the computer um <laughs> Yeah, good, Fiona. I'm glad. I, I think I think you'll find that uh, it's probably a little more stable running it um, outside of the x86 program files. Um, and uh, um, I, I've, I've got all, I think I've got almost all my games. I've got my Steam plus all the games on a separate partition. Oh, okay. Uh, on my main drive, um, and uh, um, but if you do, if you've been using um, uh se I, I mean if you've been using nexus mod manager um before then you'll want to clean up your data directory and you can do that several ways uh depending on whether you care about uh um you know what saves you have you can either just delete everything and have have uh uh have uh, steam you know re-verify the folder or you, if you know which ones to delete just delete them all from your data directory and then let mod organizer uh yeah okay so i don't have to tell you that you you know what you're doing never mind <laughs> <laughs> um well sometimes you know people who are used to using computers uh it you know some some of this stuff is is easy peasy and but for people who aren't used to uh um, you know, moving files around and making directories and, and doing stuff like that, then, then it can be pretty daunting, you know? So, um, but yeah, I'm not good with that stuff. So I tend to keep my modding, uh, to very, very simple levels yeah. and, uh, watch videos when I do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so many great ones out there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I'll try to remember, I'll try to grab a bunch of links and throw them into our, into the show notes or whatever. Um, you know, I can, um, yeah, well, you were right. It does. It does. And, and, uh, there's a whole series go, you know, if you, if you, if you don't mind spending a, probably, it's probably a couple of hours total, but if you don't mind, uh, spending the time, um, go watch Gopher's series of videos yeah, on, on Mod good. Organizer. It's very comprehensive and he is such a talented tutorial maker. The guy is, I mean, he takes it everything from the most basic right up to the, the most complex and, 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 uh, um, it's, it's really, it's really good. So, um, I highly recommend his stuff. Um, but it's, you know, it's an investment of time, but it's, it's definitely worth it. And they're old. I mean, those videos now are like two, two yeah, years they've old. Yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're still relevant to legacy. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and uh, um, I will say that, uh, again, anybody who's listening or listens later, uh, oh, good, great, you, so you've already started watching. Um, the, the new version of Mod Organizer um, is running, it's, now here's where some of my knowledge breaks down a little bit, but, but it's, it's a 64-bit, or it's a 32-bit app running under 64-bit. It's a little bit different hmm. from from the mod organizer 1.3.11. So one of the things that mod organizer two does, um, is it uses the app data folder. Anybody familiar with that? Um, so there's a, there's a, um, sort of a repository folder that windows created called app data It's in your, in your user file. So what, uh, sorry, I'm going to get a little technical. Here. So, <laughs> so what, what the what the legacy version of Mod Organizer does is it keeps everything inside your game directory. That's why I, you know suggest that you install it in your game directory, and you'll you'll go in there and you'll you'll see the there's a little gears or there's a little uh, wrench and screwdriver thing, and it lets you um, 
uh, you know, uh, create paths to where everything to where everything is. Download directories, mod directories, etc. The new version, if you're going to use Mod Organizer with SE, uh, you you absolutely have to do that. You have to change everything to the directory where you have Mod Organizer installed. Don't forget to do that before you start building uh, your mod list and building profiles. And when you make profiles, another little thing to do is make sure that you check a little checkbox that says local save games and that'll that'll make sure that every single profile keeps its own set of saves those are my two little uh pieces of advice um yeah it might very well be a weekend project i mean i to be honest with you i probably spend as much time in mod organizer as i do (laughs) actually playing the fucking game pardon my french uh, so, so yeah, it's, 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 a, <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but so. you enjoy it. That's what matters. Yeah, totally. Well, until, you, until it. like you get frustrated with it. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of no, the <laughs> No, I've never thrown my monitor across the room. I, I lost one controller that way once, but, oh, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we all yeah. have. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty sturdy, at least. Uh, yeah, for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I just found the last piece of it the other day. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> that happened about six months ago. Oh, yeah, geez. I was vacuuming. I thought, what, what the heck's that little gray piece of plastic there? Oh, oh god! And then I felt embarrassed again. Oh so, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we uh, we got to do these uh, mod ones uh, more regularly. <laughs> Yeah, they're fun. I, I, uh, yeah, maybe we can do them once a month or something. Yeah, like that. that'd be awesome. Something new coming out, you know. Because there's always uh, so much coming out for the modding. It, it's, it's like crazy. Oh, <laughs> Michelle says of the sixty or seventy hours he spent on SE, he's played only twenty-one of those hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel you. I totally feel you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and thirty thirty of those hours that you didn't play actually spend playing, you were waiting for 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 Nexus Mod Manager to move the damn <laughs> mods from one side to the other. Yeah, yeah, that that's uh, um, there's a is it? Uh, I took a I took a screenshot of it. I think it's um, was it added by um, this other mod called the People of Skyrim. It's another fairly recent rebuild of an old mod it's a big sort of comprehensive overhaul <laughs> but uh uh let's see if i can find it while we're talking here uh the the mod author added a joke button um to uh in on a table i think it's in silent moon's camp oh god <laughs> and uh it uh let's see if i can i can get it here just quickly i'll try to find it um, view. I got a few my online library here. Yeah, Adam, I have uh, that same problem. I, like, I like to get it modded and then not touch it, and then if I go back to fix anything, I don't remember what the hell happened. <laughs> that's yeah, how I got yeah. there in the first place. Yeah, that's that's my yeah. issue. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's see. And the and the thing it's it says. Uh, what does it say? Um. Yeah. Here it is. Um. All right. So you you look at this table and there's this big green button on it and 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 you hover over it and one of those little Skyrim windows comes up and it says this appears to be a strange button of sorts and only the last three letters can be translated as N M M but it is uh, clearly broken beyond repair and without any hope of functioning properly best not to ask about it and then you have to click OK <laughs> to get, to get out of it. <laughs> So, oh man this nice little easter egg yeah there. that is yeah. pretty good <laughs> yeah oh gosh oh yeah it's a on a non-skyrim note or do we, we have more modding no no okay. yeah, i'm done man i'm okay. sorry boy, I'm <laughs> oh no 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 tears by now uh, <laughs> so i i was playing i've been playing uh assassin's creed uh origins and i like i loved the series when it first came out uh, then it got to the I don't know the names of all the titles or so many of them, but it got to the Revolutionary War one, and I kind of fell off. 
Yeah, that was three. That wasn't yeah. very good, was it? it? Once they started like introducing like uh, muskets and guns and stuff, I was like, that's not why I play Assassin's Creed. So I was like, eh, all right. So I fell off of it for a while. But I tell you what, this one really brings you back to like those originals with like Ezio and uh, whoever the characters were in those. But it really brings you back to those. They've really limited the animus, at least so far, of what I've played. So you're not taken in and out of the game so much like you were back then. But I think that was more of an issue of having having to load areas and stuff back then. So that could be, yeah. yeah that you may be right. I hadn't actually thought of that. Yeah. Um, whereas now you can go a little. So it, it, you know, I love the setting in Egypt, and uh, it's just it it. I really really enjoy it quite a bit. It, it brings me back to how the game was originally, but you know, obviously it works a little better. There are some weird glitchy things that I know. I mean, people complain about, uh, you know, when Bethesda came, games come out glitchy or whatever, like. People are carrying spears and walking through doorways where the spear is like five foot taller than the doorway and it just goes through the wall. <laughs> you <know? laughs> like you notice those things like that don't really happen in uh, actually in Skyrim or Bethesda games generally. Um, you know, other than mistakes, it, you know, things render weird. But like I had a, a chariot fall like through the uh, sand and disappears <laughs> at one point. Really? And I had to, and it was one that I had stopped that I had to like get something out of. Uh-oh. And I couldn't get it because it like essentially disappeared. <laughs> so. Are you are you playing on Xbox One? Uh, yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I, yeah, I, if you liked it originally, it's definitely uh, Origins is well worth it. I got it when it was on sale. Uh, it might still be. It was like thirty dollars on Amazon. Yeah, um, I think I, I I agree with you totally. It's a it's an awesome reboot, not a reboot, but it's an awesome uh, new version of the game. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's I haven't had any of the weird glitches. I know Sean. Uh, my son Sean has been playing the heck out of it on I PC. have too, actually. <laughs> um, and uh, he's he's way he's way into it. Uh, I forget how far he's gotten now. I I would I would say though one thing that I always felt um, I didn't like the opening of of Assassin's Creed Three, which which you had to sort of go through that training run. Oh you know, in, yeah, in the anima and all that crap. But I've always felt that they. And I know a lot of people have criticized the Animus and that whole section of the story. I've always felt they never developed that enough. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. I that's think... a really cool part of the, the whole thing. And they started getting away from it more and more and more. Yeah. Syndicate was a pretty good game, actually. I played a fair amount of that. Unity had, it had you know, very well-known and highly publicized problems. Oh, yeah, that's right, um, yeah. Yeah, but um, and Black Flag was actually darn good. Um, that was, uh, I think, number four, the one okay. with the pirate ships. Oh, stuff. that's right. Yeah, I never played that one, yeah. though. But yeah. yeah. That was darn good. Three three was pretty poor. You know, Brotherhood was was probably one of the better ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, this is this is a superb game in, in, in so many ways. And I don't know. I mean, um, the uh, the parts of it that that do involve the animus – uh, are really cool. So, have, yes. What part have you? I don't want. We don't want to get spoilers. I'm pretty far along. I'm like level 26 now. Okay. And I'm right. I'm pretty decently far along on the main story, and I have gotten to some kind of uh, special moments in the game. I guess you could say where things, okay, yeah, happen beyond the natural state of uh, Egypt. Okay. <laughs> we'll say right. to, yeah. to say yeah. it in a weird, uh, vague way. <laughs> Yeah, as vague as possible. But yes, yeah. I, I'm glad that they I'm glad they brought it back yeah. that way and I'm I'm glad they're they're integrating it into the game world in a in a really in a really good way. I, I just I just hope that it means that, that it will stay a part of the story. Because I know there's a lot of people who wanted them to just get rid of it completely and I thought, No, don't do that. It's such a cool it the works. Whole concept yeah. Is really cool. What I like it. See, what I don't. I think I have the same issue you have, where it's like I did like it in the original ones because I felt like you had to explore the lab or wherever you were and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. it feels like it's just been so neutered that it's almost not enough of. So it either needs to be a real part of the story, fully fleshed out, or just a device to get you into the story. Yeah. So well, I, I hope it's the former. I hope yeah. They, they, yeah. Um, it's so. a tough balance, though. I'm sure because uh, you know you don't want to keep bouncing people back and forth between the two uh, worlds, really, that you're playing in. 
you know, because you're so building a character. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because, you know, you're building your character so much. You're, you're you know, adding new weapons, new gear, um, all that kind of stuff, yeah. new skills. So yeah. once you're taken out, like, do they're not really there. Or once you're in another character, they're not really there. So yeah. all that time you've invested, it, it's, it's a tough balance. I, I can see where it's tricky for them to figure out exactly what to do. Yeah, well, I mean, The Witcher Three did that pretty well. Mm-hmm. When you're playing as Siri, I mean, it, it didn't, it didn't really, you know, I don't think that took away from the the game no. at all. Um, so anyway, I'm not as far as you are in, in it. So so, uh, but uh, but it's, yeah, it's I, quite I'm enjoyable. Safe. Yeah, I, it's I, absolutely a great a great uh, addition to the to the franchise. Yeah, it really does look fantastic too. Yeah, it just oh my God, yeah. yeah, just yeah. a really great looking game. Yeah, I watched. I mean, I, it looks great on the Xbox One. I was up uh, home for Christmas and watched Sean playing it on his on his PC, and he's got a you know, he's got a uh, mega powerful uh, you know gamer, <laughs> gaming, gaming PC, and it just looked unbelievable on that thing. Um, and I gather Jeremy's been playing it in 4K. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I'm sure it looks even better. Oh, there, yeah. So. I have a 4K TV, but I don't have the... It's only the Xbox One X that does the 4K. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the only reason I have a 4K TV is because it was, like, cheap. <laughs> it was as much yeah. as the other TVs anyway. So I was like, well, I might as well get it. Whatever. I don't know yeah. if I have anything in 4K. Well, and, but... and I guess really to, to get the, the, the entire... The whole... Uh, package out of a game like um, Origins, you have to have a, an HDR. It has to do HDR as well, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, I'm content with with just my regular old yeah. 1080p. I mean, it yeah. looks great from wherever. I'm like five feet away from like a 45 inch. So like, I, I mean, really, do I need it to be that much clearer at this point? Yeah, probably not. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, look, it could always be clearer. That's great, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. so that was it yeah i i've been really enjoying uh origins quite a bit uh I, i'm excited to play it. i'm going to take a break from it to hop into my oblivion stuff um we have the round table returning um not october january <laughs> 21st i was gonna say october 21st for some reason not even close to that yet uh january 21st uh 3 p.m eastern time uh juan and Colin and myself will be uh, helping out Bruma and closing that darn Oblivion gate. Awesome. And <laughs> we'll see if I can uh, get some gear on Martin after I screwed up and picked up the uh, whatever it's called, large Welkin stone or whatever that I shouldn't have picked up early in the game and has now screwed up my game. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was one of those, it's one of those glitches that's been around forever and I totally forgot about it and picked up and I, you. It screws up his character, who you have to protect this whole through this whole battle. Mm-hmm. And um, but you can put in Oblivion, you can't reverse pickpocket unless it's zero weight. So I had to use a glitch to make um, conjured gear, which is zero weight, and then have it become permanent. And then I can mm-hmm. put that in his inventory, so he puts it on because he's not going to get his real armor otherwise, and then he'll die in, like, five seconds. And oh. it'll, it'll take me forever to finish the quest line. So, <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. i got to get into that. So, yeah, we'll be uh, finishing up the, uh, I think, is this the last one or next to the last one? But we'll be uh, closing the gate, I believe, um, right before the last one. Cool. So that, that'll be coming up here. Um, actually, a little bit Fallout's Fallout recording, recording later. Recording later tonight. Yeah, right? yeah. What time is it? It's uh, they're recording at ten o'clock, yep. Eastern time. It's uh, they're recording in an hour and a half. Yeah, it's eight thirty now. Here so. on uh, YouTube, um, we were doing this one through Patreon on YouTube. Um, so I want to thank everybody. Thank Lee, Michelle, Patrick, Sarah, Adam, Adam, Lee, uh, Joshua, Stephen. Of course, it was in there. Dale underscore A formerly of Paper Keg R.I.P., Fiona, Kenneth, Stephen, Ryan, Mikey P. from uh, the Paper Keg crew, uh, Victor, <laughs> and Ray, <laughs> all the patrons, thank you, uh, that essentially pays for the feeds that we have. Um, that's basically what we use Patreon for. Uh, yep, other than that, thanks, trying everybody. to think what else is there anything show wise um well i just want to make a one oh, yeah, really go. quick comment uh based on something that michelle just said mm-hmm. about manually downloading mods um 
that's the way I, I do it too. I don't use the, the, uh, download from Nexus button. So, uh, for, especially for you, Fiona, when you're starting out with, um, with mod organizer, um, I do the manual download from the Nexus. Then I drag the files over into the download folder in mod organizer. You'll find that. Don't worry about it. And then when you open up mod organizer, uh, you'll see a tab that says downloads. And when you go in there, everything that you've put in the downloads directory will have a little sort of a triangle with an exclamation point in it. And if you right click on that and select something called query info, um, it, it might ask you for the mod number, but it's the Nexus mod number. It's right there in the title of the mod. Um, and, and then you just sort of install it that way. I find that's easier because if you have a lot of mod managers running and different things, trying to get the right one, get the mod to download automatically from the Nexus to the right place can be a real pain in the ass. So it's just easier to do it manually. So I just wanted to, to say that Michelle is correct. It's, it's better to, to just manually download stuff ah, yes. uh, and put it in the right place. So, Oh, and um, next time, how, um, just throwing this out there to everybody in the chat. Uh, if, if they want to come on uh, the mod show we do, since they're all everybody in the chat is super into the modding, and then they could uh, we could all talk about it together. That you're, you know, just shoot me an email. You're all invited. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, and I think actually I, I'm I'm leaving on Sunday for North Carolina, but I think I'm going to do some streaming on Saturday. So uh, if anybody's interested, I maybe I'll do part of my stream and I'll just go through some of that process with Mod Organizer, awesome. just so people can actually watch it happen um, and uh, and stuff. I've already got a couple of videos up on the site that that do some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But they're getting old now, so ah. maybe I'll, I'll just I'll I'll do a couple more and just just run through. So um, so yeah, some sometime on th- Saturday I think I'll do some some live streaming on on my uh, open world um, channel there. So awesome, yeah. Before the next time we get together for the modding one, I'll, we'll, we'll plan it out a little bit ahead, and I'll let everybody know. Uh, and of course, Stephen, always welcome on the show. I gotta make sure I contact you ahead of time first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Generally, here's the difference. Like, see, like when Andrew plans stuff, it's like planned like eight months in advance. That's why like the, the Fallout stuff so easily planned out because I, yeah, yeah I know. It's like amazing. over here it's very loosey goosey. It's, <laughs> it's like yeah. you, like you're lucky the Oblivion one is planned for a week and a half from now. <laughs> And the only reason that's planned is because we need enough time to do the quest lines. <laughs> that's it. Because <laughs> otherwise, it's like, oh wait, ah, oh, yeah, we should record today. That would be great. Let me send a message. See if anybody wants to record today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pulling the curtain back uh, over here. <laughs> yeah, and there's been a little gap because of this stinking blizzard that went rolling through, and uh, we got wailed. And I was at work for like four days, so that kind of threw uh, all recording out the window for the weekend. Yeah, that must have sucked. I mean, I, I it did <laughs> not to gloat or anything, but West, West Point was on code red for a day and a half, so I just got to stay home and get paid. You know, that's so, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I I went to work on Wednesday. I came home Friday afternoon. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, it was a it was a great time. Let me tell you. Uh, that's sleep- the advantage of not being a mission critical employee. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. So, so I, I just, oh. I just it was a blast. You know, he tells me, don't come to work. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beautiful thing right there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. Oh, uh, I wish that's what they had said. <laughs> I wish they were like, Mike, you should stay home. It's uh, yeah. really snowy. <laughs> I know yeah. you're sick of the snow at this point in your career. Uh, please stay home. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That, I didn't get that call for some reason. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You can always contact the show, Podcast gmail.com. Join the Facebook group, facebook.com uh, slash group slash Uh Obviously, we have the Fallout feed. Uh, we have the Mario Kart show. We have uh, my journey. Uh, with, uh, uh, awesome Spaceship. I almost forgot. Um, uh, Chatterbox. We record like once a month. Talk about stuff. Um, one, one time, a chick died on the show. Uh, literally. 
Uh, let's see. <laughs> Mikhail was nursing, uh, like nursing a, a baby chick that she has a farm in uh, the Pacific Northwest, in uh, oh. right outside of Vancouver. <laughs> and it was like chirping the show. And we, it went quiet, and we like, what the heck happened? And like, so I texted her like the next day. I'm like, what? And she's like, oh no, it died. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like, that's Lord. awful. It's like, jeez, like, that's horrible. <laughs> but um, so these all these crazy things can possibly happen. Um, so join us next time. Next time will probably be a Oblivion Roundtable, but uh, there might be one in between uh, now and then. So uh, I think that's probably likely um, because that's not for another eleven days, ten days, something like that. So. Try and get another one in there, another short one in between. All right. Thank you, Victor. Thanks, Michael, as always. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everybody, for listening. Good night, all. Thank you, everyone, for watching me nod on the video every time it popped to me. <laughs> <laughs> Never watch yourself on YouTube because I felt like every time I popped on the screen, I was going, just nodding and like, uh, or raising my arm in some weird way. So. Uh, this whole video thing is very strange, but <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks everybody. I'm going to turn off the live stream. <laughs>